MX Linux, you guys love this distribution. If the view counts are any indication on the videos that I've done about this distribution in the past, you guys really love this one. I love this one as well. It's a great distro, highly recommended, and I wanted to create an installation video to show you guys the process of installing MX Linux as the only operating system on your computer. We're gonna use my tried and true System76 lemur that I have right here that I use in you know quite a few of my videos. So this isn't new to you if you've seen any of my previous videos. We're gonna wipe this thing out and make MX Linux the only operating system on that and I will show you the process from beginning to end. Now I've already created a bootable flash drive for MX Linux 19, the latest release, and I have that right here already ready to go. So if you haven't already done so, you could just click on the link in the description down below and you'll see a link down there to download MX Linux 19. That's the latest release as of the time that I'm recording this video. So you'll download that ISO file and you can use that to create a bootable flash drive like I've already done. If you don't already know how to do that, I have a video. I'll put a uh, card somewhere up here that'll link to the video you can use that'll walk you through that process. So let's go ahead and get this installed. I'm going to put my flash drive right here into my computer and we're going to go ahead and dive into the MX Linux installation. So what you're seeing on your screen right now, obviously this is not MX Linux. I was testing out Fedora on this laptop, so we're going to go ahead and wipe that out. I did insert the flash drive, so let's go ahead and reboot and we will boot from that flash drive and you will see the entire process. And if you're new to my channel, I am not going to go through the installation process on a virtual machine. We are literally going to wipe this machine. This is an HDMI cable that is plugged into a screen recorder, so you will see the actual process on the actual laptop. Speaking of which, here we have the boot screen for my laptop. So basically, when you start up your computer with a flash drive inserted, you just hit that boot menu key, whatever that happens to be for your machine, and then you select your flash drive. This is mine right here, so I'll press enter to boot from that. And here we are at the MX Linux boot screen. You can see at the bottom, it is counting down. So the highlighted entry, it says, will start in a, you know less than a minute now. So if you don't press anything, it's automatically going to choose the second option as you see here, the customized boot option. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter to speed this along and choose that default option. So we get some options here. So first of all, we select our language. So you'll just go ahead and basically type in whatever number corresponds to your preferred language. Now mine is number 14 for English US. So that's what I typed in there and then I press enter. Now for the number of console columns, I'm not going to uh, you know customize that. I'm just going to leave that alone and press enter. Now it wants me to select a time zone. So you just basically choose whichever one of these options corresponds to your time zone. So New York for me is good enough. That's option number 13. So that's what I typed in and then enter. Now here we have some boot options and I'm going to press enter to choose the default but you do have some options here. Some of them are a little bit more advanced. I don't think a lot of you will need any of these, but if you're having any problems booting into MX Linux, you might want to explore some of these options here, but you shouldn't have to. I'm just gonna go ahead and press enter. So here we have some options for persistence. So basically the option of persistence isn't very common anymore. It used to be back in the day when live media was first, uh, you know, a new thing, that there was this idea of persistence where you can have part of your flash drive to save changes because your installation media is generally read only. When you reboot your computer, you basically lose anything you uh, change on your live media. But then there, this concept of persistence was almost like a separate partition or file that would just keep track of changes. 
And it's kind of cool to see that here because it's not something that we discuss quite a bit, if at all, nowadays, because generally we use live media for testing a distribution and then installing that distribution. And then we just simply keep it around if we need to recover or do anything like troubleshooting, something like that. So it's interesting to see that being an option here. I'm going to just press enter to select the default. I'm not going to customize the persistence here because I feel like that's beyond the scope of what we're doing. We're simply just installing MX Linux. So I'll press enter. For the font size, I'm going to go ahead and press enter and keep that as its default. And let's go ahead and boot into this release. And here we are. This is the MX Linux desktop right here. We are currently running off the flash drive. Like I mentioned, this is live media. This gives us an option and the ability to test out this distribution before we go ahead and install it. So as always, I go through basically the same scheme every time I do a new installation walkthrough, but it applies here as well. We wanna basically make sure everything works. First thing we're gonna do is go over here to where we have this little X, it's kind of small, I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and we want to click on our wireless connection. If you have a you know ethernet cable plugged in, you could probably skip this step, but assuming you want to use wireless, I'm gonna select my wireless network right here. I'm gonna put in the password. And click connect. You can see here that we are connected. We got this little message up here to confirm that as well. We are connected to the network. We can open up Firefox, the default browser, just to make sure that we are able to get to a website. So we can go to learnlinux.tv, for example. That confirms that internet is working. This page did load and you can click on any video here to test that audio is working and then you could also watch videos. But anyway, uh, you just basically make sure that it works for you. I'll go over this distribution in more detail in the review video as soon as I have that uploaded. But for the purposes of this video, we want to install it and there's a link to the installer right here on the desktop. So we could simply click on that and that brings up the MX Linux installer. So we get an option to change our keyboard settings. I'm going to leave that as the default. And what I'm going to do is choose this option here, auto install using entire disk. And then I select my hard drive. If you have more than one, select the appropriate one. It does show the boot media here. You don't want to choose that. Generally, it's going to be your largest hard drive and it'll have the model number like right here. You see I'm running a Samsung SSD. I know that that's the correct one. And it goes without saying, obviously, um, this is gonna wipe your disk. It, it says that here, but I need to make that clear. If uh, you have anything you need to back up, please do that first because this wipes out everything. You also wanna be sure that you've given this a few minutes in live mode to test it out. And if you are ready to go, let's go ahead and get this installed. Now, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and encrypt this. This is completely optional. This is encryption at rest, which basically means when your laptop or computer is off and somebody tries to access the data, they cannot do that if the machine is not running because when you start it up, it's going to ask you for the password that's going to decrypt it. But if they don't have that password, they can't get that going. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my password here and confirm it. Again, this is optional. We can also leave free space if we would like. Basically what this means is you can auto install using the entire disk, but leave some of that actually not as part of the installation. But again, that's up to you if you plan on dual booting or something like that. That might make sense for you, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. And then it's just confirming that I'm okay to format everything. I am, that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes. So right now it is installing MX Linux already. We still have some additional steps to go. We can choose Grub for the bootloader and that's what I recommend that you do as well. And you should also select the appropriate hard drive. Now this is the correct one for me, SDA, that is correct. You do not want to choose your live media for this. Computer name, I'm going to go ahead and give it the 
name of MX test. This is just a test machine. And for the domain, I'm just going to leave this one alone right here. And then we also get an option for Samba. If you don't feel you're ever going to use that, you can uncheck it. Basically, it allows you to share with Windows computers if you want to share files. You can also share with other Linux computers as well. It's an easy way to do file sharing. It's up to you if you want that. If you, Again, if you're not going to use it, just uncheck it. But I'm going to leave that as the default for now. It wants me to set the locale, which I'm going to set as default. You have a bunch of different options here. But we're going to leave that one alone because that is correct for me. But feel free to change that accordingly. And then, of course, we have the time zone, which is correct in my case. But of course, you can go ahead and choose whatever you'd like that to be. I prefer the 24-hour clock format, so I'm going to choose this option right here. If you don't care, you can go ahead and leave that alone. And I'm not going to go over the advanced settings in this video because that's beyond the scope of what we are trying to do. It just means that we have additional options, but for the purposes of wiping the hard drive, I'm just going to leave that as it is. And at this screen, we need to create a login name. So I'm just going to use my name here, and then we're gonna type a password for that user account. This is what you want your password to be. And then for the root account, this is another user on the system, kind of like the at, you know, like the administrator user. I'm going to give that one a password as well. Nothing too strong because this is a test machine, but this root account here should definitely have a very strong password. You can auto log in if you'd like. That's useful for like setting up a kiosk if you want someone to be able to get onto the system without having to type in a password, you can do that. If you've done some things like changed the wallpaper or made some customizations, you can choose this option right here, which will basically save the changes that you've made while using live mode, which will then apply those settings to the final installed version. That's up to you. If you don't check this, you'll be starting fresh. So I'm going to leave that alone and just click next. All right, so we are finished. MX Linux installation is complete. So all I need to do is click on finish right here and that will reboot my machine and it'll start into the freshly installed MX Linux 19. Here's the default boot screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and let that finish. All right, and since I encrypted the drive, we have a entry right here for that encryption password. So if you did not encrypt your drive, you won't see this. Go ahead and put in my super secret key here. And that'll go ahead and set up the boot process, unlock the drive and allow it to start up. What you see here is the login screen. So the password that I set up for my user is what I will enter here. And here we go. We have successfully installed MX Linux 19 on our system. So there you go. That was the entire installation process for MX Linux 19. The installer is really easy to follow along with. It basically installs fairly quickly, not the quickest, but definitely quick enough. And you also get a lot of advanced options that you can use if you want to fine tune your installation. But for the purposes of this video, for installing MX Linux 19 on our system, we have achieved that it is installed. So again, stay tuned for my review of MX Linux 19. That should be on my channel soon if it's not already, and I will see you there. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.